Hello, I'm Lara Delu and I'm the resident gemologist here at Gemporia and this is the 101. And today we are talking about the queen of gemstones, the pearl. Now pearls have been coveted for centuries and centuries and centuries. I mean, some records actually go back as far as 2206 BC. That's how long we've been loving pearls. And you can get pearls from all over the world. You can get freshwater pearls, you can also get saltwater pearls. And you never know what colour the pearl's going to be until you get into that shell. Now, the one thing that springs to mind when we think about pearls, for me particularly, is the golden age of cinema. Think about Audrey Hepburn. Think about that scene at breakfast at Tiffany's. Think about Marilyn Monroe. One of the most famous photographs that were ever taken of her was actually taken with a strand of the most incredible, perfect, beautiful pearls. No one can be certain of who first started collecting pearls, but famed gemologist George Frederick Kunz believed that the ancient coastal tribes of India were amongst the first to appreciate the luster of saltwater pearls. Between 500 and 600 BC, the Pandyas of southern India derived great wealth via controlled pearl fisheries along the South Indian coast, between Sri Lanka and the Gulf of Manar. During the Han Dynasty, between 206 BC to 220 AD, the Chinese extensively hunted for pearls in the South China Sea. In the 16th century, Spanish conquistadors discovered extensive pearl beds around the islands of Cubegua and Margarita, just off the Venezuelan coast. This led to the discovery of possibly the most famous pearl of all time, La Peregrina Pearl, a pearl so grand, the slave who found it was able to exchange it for his freedom. Fittingly, Peregrina is Spanish for pilgrim or wanderer, and over its 500-year history, the pearl has passed from king to queen. It was later given to Elizabeth Taylor as a Valentine's Day gift during her first marriage to Richard Burton. Later, Miss Taylor had the pearl mounted into a Cartier necklace. In 2011, it sold for a record $11 million at auction. Finally, Though pearls have been worn for thousands of years, it wasn't until the early 20th century that pioneer Mikimoto revolutionised the pearl industry by cultivating pearls in a way which meant supply for this luxury gemstone could finally meet demand. Natural pearls are extremely rare. You can often find them around the Persian Gulf, but most of them have now been harvested and they are extremely costly. Now if you look at how the original Cartier building was bought, it was actually a double strand of oriental pearls that was used. Now that strand was worth about 1.2 million dollars at the time. Today, the same strand would be worth 16 million dollars. Cultured pearls are grown in environmentally friendly pearl farms. Mollusks are carefully grown to help produce high quality pearls. Even so, only a select few will be of acceptable quality. You can get pearls from various locations, including Australia, Indonesia, the Philippines, China and Japan. Saltwater pearls include the Akoya cultured pearls, which are grown in Japanese and Chinese waters. Tahitian pearls are grown around the islands of French Polynesia. They're often referred to as black pearls, but it's more the peacock colours that they're renowned for, the greens, the greyish and the blue tones. Freshwater pearls are grown in freshwater lakes, rivers and ponds, predominantly in China. They can often resemble akoya pearls, but can form in a variety of shapes and colours. So how a pearl is actually formed is, you have the oyster or the mussel, and a little tiny grain of something gets into it. Now whether that's sand, or if it's a little bit of shell, or a little rock, or whatever it is, it gets in. And the oyster or the mussel, the mollusk, wants to protect itself, so it forms a protective layer around this foreign item. And it keeps doing it, and keeps doing it, and keeps doing it, until it's formed a pearl. The longer it's in there, the bigger the pearl will be. Now, one thing you want to look out for, if you want an amazing pearl, is you want to look at the colour, you want to look at the pearlescence, you want to look for the smoothness of the pearl itself, and also how spherical it is. On top of that, if you want to know if it's a real pearl or not, really easy way of doing it. You get the pearl, and you rub it against your teeth. If it's a little bit grainy, a little bit gritty, then it's a pearl. If it's not, and it's smooth, then it's a fake. If you don't want to do it against your teeth, I understand, you can do it against each other. So if you've got a strand of pearls, you can rub them together. If they're smooth, it's not real. 
So why do people love pearls? Well, I've loved pearls from the moment I laid eyes on them. For me, it was a very early memory of my, my grandmother wearing fake pearls, and it was actually the first thing that was given to me. Um, I never wanted to have fakes, I always wanted the real thing. So for my 21st birthday, my mum bought me my first pearl bracelet, and I've been in love ever since. I think it's because it's something from nature, and I think it's also because it's something from the sea. We, we have a real love affair with the sea, it's mysterious, it's wonderful, it's epic, and as well, it can be calming. And when you look at a pearl, you've got all of those elements. It's exciting, it's beautiful, you've got the pearlescence, you've got the sheen. And on top of that as well, it's iconic, classic style. And if you think about it, look at all the women throughout history, the most stylish, the most iconic, of all worn pearls in one form or another, whether it's earrings or a necklace, and they always look amazing. If you've enjoyed the video, then please do check them out on the left-hand side. Loads more different informational bits there. And please don't forget to subscribe below. And if you want to get some hands on gorgeous genuine gemstone jewellery, then you can also visit us at www.gemporia.com or catch us on TV.